Hey, what's up guys, it's Ryan, and welcome back to another highly requested video. This one I'm super excited to release because I've been working on this load order for what seems like forever now. And this is going to be one of my biggest load orders because we finally were able to break the traditional 150 mod cap. Now obviously that doesn't mean that you can install more than 150 mods, but using these new bundle mods that have been coming out over the past few weeks, we're able to fit more than 150 mods into our load orders using these mod packs. And that's going to be the theme for this load order, we're going to be jamming over 200 mods into one mod list to completely transform Skyrim into a brand new game in 2021. Now just like our other load order videos, I'm well aware that this is going to be a very lengthy video, so if you don't want to sit back and hear about each and every single mod that we have in this list, you can feel free to skip out and just dive into the load order in the description or the pinned comment, but I do want to say that you should at least go to these timestamps that I have up on the screen here because there is some important information to note regarding some of these mods, and I'd hate for you guys to skip out on some of the information and then end up having problems later in the list. So like I said, if you are going to skip over watching this video and you just want the list, at least make sure to go to these timestamps here so you don't miss anything important. And last but not least, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market, so if you're looking for a better alternative to those gas station energy drinks that are really bad for you, try out Gamersups and use my link down below. You can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases, and in celebration for this load order here, Gamersubs has allowed me to yet again do another giveaway, where we're going to be giving away 3 free tubs of Gamersubs. So if you want to subscribe down below and comment a mod that you can't live without, I'll be able to choose from one of you guys and you'll be able to get a free tub of Gamersubs. Now that all that's out of the way, we can sit back, relax, and jump into what I think is the best load order I've ever created. This is the Skyrim Mod Pack mod list. Now I'm sure many of you guys know this by now if you followed our previous load order videos, but before we actually dive in and start adding mods to our list, there's something very important that we have to do, and that's to clear our reserve space. You can clear your reserve space by pressing start on Skyrim and then heading down to the manage game and add on section, and under the save data tab you'll find a reserve space that you can press A on, and then you can clear your reserve space. The reason we do this is because if you have a bunch of mods installed and then you delete them, even if you have an empty load order, if you haven't cleared your reserve space, there's still a bunch of ghost files in there that you can't see but they still take up space. This is why sometimes whenever you go to download a mod and you have enough space, it'll still tell you that you don't have enough space. It's because of these ghost files from your deleted mods. So in order to get around that, we have to clear our reserve space, which will completely wipe out all of your mods in your load order and start you fresh on a brand new Skyrim. So now that we have a clean and fresh version of Skyrim, we're able to jump back into our mods tab and start building this mod pack mod list. And starting us off with the first mod in this huge list, we have the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, which is pretty much at the top of every load order I've ever created, and it's a mod that I can't live without. It features hundreds of gameplay, quest, NPC, object, item, and text placement bugs fixed. This mod is simply just a comprehensive bug fixing mod for Skyrim because we all know that Bethesda releases some buggy games, and it's important to go in there and fix those glitches and bugs before we go and add other mods to our list, just to avoid as many incompatibilities as possible. And this is also how I'm going to be talking about each and every single mod in this list. I'm going to go one by one down our list here, give you a little bit of a brief description of the mod, and then we can move on to the next mod. Because if I sat here and talked in detail about every single mod in this list, we would be here for hours, and I already know it's going to be a long video, so I'm just going to give you guys a brief little description of the mod, and then we can move on to the next one. Like in this case, we have the Elder Scrolls HD Main Menu Replacer mod. Now this is basically a main menu replacer, and the first thing you'll see whenever you boot up this mod list, and the model for the Elder Scroll in the middle has animated spinning parts as well. It also has gems and a pulsating glow effect along with animated effects, so right whenever you boot up Skyrim, you'll be greeted with an animated new main menu screen and it'll just get you ready to jump into the game. Now that we've covered our main menu mod, it's important to move over to music and actually focus on that too. But we're not going to dive too far into music because I already love Jeremy Soule's work and it's very hard to improve upon that, so why not just add more music to listen to alongside while you're exploring Skyrim? And that's what we can do with the Skyrim Music 2 mod, which is an actual mod pack of music mods that features three music mods, that being the Melodies of Civilization, some Skyrim fan-made combat music, as well as the still-inspired Skyrim music. These mods add new music to the cities as well as combat tracks and new exploration and dungeon tracks, without actually touching any of the original soundtracks, so it fits along Skyrim perfectly and just gives you a lot more music to listen to as you're exploring. 
Once we have our title screen and music mods in place, we can then move on to changing our load screens with the TESG load screen replacer mod. This has been in lots of my load orders and I feel as though it's a mod I can't remove because of just how great these loading screens are. Basically what this mod does is it's a loading screen mod that adds 205 high resolution screenshots that have been processed to resemble paintings. Moving on, we can start focusing on our UI mods and we actually only have one mod because it's a giant mod pack. And this is probably the mod that I get asked about the most because it's just so amazing, and that's the Scry UI mod. This is a mod pack that features some of the best improvements to the UI that I've seen in a very long time. And it's a mod pack, so it features a bunch of different mods, such as the minimalist HUD, as well as map improvements like better map controls, added map markers for smaller locations, as well as colored map markers. And then you have improved menus such as dialogue, book reading, a categorized favorites menu, the pause menu excluded the mods option so you don't accidentally press it whenever you're playing, and then the sleep and wait menus allow for up to 72 hours, and all of the menus have been up to 60 frames per second, which is actually why you don't see the 60 frames per second mod included in this list because it's featured in this mod pack here. You also have the dynamic third person camera as well as the dynamic camera mod included in here. So you have all of the features that you could possibly want whenever it comes to UI all inside this one 6.92 megabyte mod called Scry UI. And then our last mod to top off this title as well as music and UI category, we have the quieter dungeons and caves mod, which makes it so that every single dungeon and cave that you enter will be a lot more quieter obviously, but you'll actually hear stuff in the cave that actually matters. You can hear dust falling from the ceiling, distant conversations better, as well as enemies breathing and creatures growling. Moving on to our next category of mods, we can focus in on the physics of Skyrim. We use three mods to fix the physics, that's the realistic ragdolls in force, the realistic impacts, as well as the realistic death physics mod. The realistic ragdolls in force mod simply just reduces the amount of force for ragdolls to a realistic level, there's less stiffness to overall limbs of ragdolls by increasing their bend and twist radius, there's also been a weight increase for most ragdolls for a realistic fall velocity, as well as increased friction so that ragdolls will almost no longer ice slide across every hill that they come across. And then moving on to the realistic impacts mod, this makes it so that large beasts will now impose a more realistic power attack against their opponents. And dragon ground wing attacks can send their opponents into the air, as well as mammoths forward and standing power attacks can do the same, making these creatures far more dangerous to attack up close. And then finally we have the realistic death physics mod, which simply just removes the death animations from animals and NPCs. This just makes them ragdoll immediately so they don't do that stupid little spinning animation before they die. This is also where I have to pause the load order for one second because we do have to explain a small little incompatibility with the realistic death physics mod. Now later on in the list we're going to be installing an alternate start mod so that you can start anywhere you want in Skyrim instead of doing the boring old intro sequence, but if you have the alternate start mod installed as well as the realistic death physics mod, if you try to go ahead and do the vanilla opening sequence where Autoin comes down and shouts at you and you're on the chopping block and everything, the realistic death physics mod won't work during that cut scene. So to get around this, you'll just have to disable this realistic death physics mod, get through Helgen, and then once you leave, make sure to create a save, back out and re-enable it, and then you can hop back in without any issues. But since we're going to be using the alternate start mod, if you aren't going to do the vanilla start, then you can simply just ignore this because we are just going to be starting in a different location later with the alternate start mod, but I just wanted to make that clear for people who are still running the vanilla start. Moving on from our physics mod, up next we have the cheat room mod, which is a mod that I don't really use for cheating. It's more so just a mod that'll help me fix Skyrim if anything happens to break. Not saying any of these mods will break, but we all know that Skyrim always has some problems whether you're using mods or not. If you do encounter a problem like this, the cheat room is there for you. It has a spell that allows you to alter pretty much anything about the game, or if anything goes missing, you can teleport to a cheat room that has every item in the game as well. The cheat room is always there for you if you encounter any problems within Skyrim, so it's a staple mod to have in pretty much any of your load orders. Moving on to our next section of mods, we can start talking about the armor and clothing of Skyrim. And starting us off, we have the face masks of Skyrim, which just allows you to wear face masks in eight different color variants. There's black, blue, brown, green, purple, red, white, and yellow. These are craftable at any tanning rack, and they just use linen wraps to create. After that we have the Cloaks of Skyrim mod, which is an amazing mod that adds over 100 cloaks and cape variants to the world, and it not only adds them as a craftable option, but also into leveled lists as well, so that you can find them on enemies and around the world. 
It also adds designs for every major faction, including guards and the Greybeards, as well as unique cloaks and capes hidden around the world with their own unique designs and also enchantments. Cloaks can be randomly found enchanted, just like vanilla armors as well. Up next, we have our all-in-one armor mod, which is the Amidian Born Book of Silence. This sets the industry for Skyrim textures, and it includes every single armor that you could think of, such as light armors like the fur studded in hide, as well as heavy armors like iron, steel, blades, dwarven, orcish. You get it, it covers all of the different types of armors that you could find in the game, and makes them have new and high quality textures. Now that we have our all-in-one armor mod installed, let's also install our all-in-one clothing mod, which is the New Haven Robes and Clothing Overhaul. This is a mod pack that includes the opulent outfits for Mages of Winterhold, as well as the common robes pack and the elaborate textiles, and all of these textures are 1k or smaller, and it changes all of the college mages robes, the necromancer robes, the monk robes, as well as the clothing for all the citizens of Skyrim. And then after that we can move on to our next armor pack, which is the light guard armor overhaul. This mod does exactly what you may think, and it changes all of the guard armors to be replaced with heavy and light versions, as well as have better quality textures. It's pretty much a mod that I can't live without because we have other armor mods installed, so whenever you enter a city and see a guard, you want them to have better quality textured armor as well. Following that, we have the Bandolier Bags and Pouches mod, which offers you so many different items, 67 to be exact, that increase your carry weight and can be added on top of your armor. After that, we have the Black Leather Sheath mod, which just simply retextures the original leather sheath, which was brown, to be black instead. This is because whenever we have our armor mods installed that actually change the armor to feel a lot more darker, the Black Leather Sheath makes it blend in a lot better instead of being brown. It's just basically a quality of life improvement to your armors and outfits to just make you look better. And then topping off our armor and clothing mods, we have the Wear Multiple Rings mod, which allows you to wear 10 rings instead of just one now. Since you have 10 fingers, you can equip up to 10, but they all have to be different types as well, so you can't just equip two different gold rings. One has to be either a gold sapphire and a different type of ring, but they just can't be the same type. Now we can move on to the next category of mods here, which is our stat changing and magic mods. Starting us off, we have the Pinion Mod Pack, which is a bundle based on 18 different mods inside of one mod pack here. And we have huge mods included here, such as the Ordinator Perks of Skyrim, the Odin Magic Mod, as well as the Andromeda Standing Stones, and even the Forceful Tongue Shouts. And whenever it comes to some of these big mods, obviously I can't cover all 18 in this video, I'll just cover some of the big ones here. Ordinator Perks of Skyrim, I'm sure everyone has heard of before. It adds hundreds of new perks into the game that you can use at your disposal and build your character in so many different ways. It's pretty much a mod that never leaves my load order. And then the Odin Magic Overhaul adds hundreds of new spells into the game, such as ones that were even in Oblivion. So if you were missing some spells from Oblivion, you'll get them revisited here in Skyrim, and I think that's really cool. As well as more spells never seen before. And then we have the Andromeda Standing Stone Overhaul, which completely overhauls all of the abilities that you get from the Standing Stones, making them more worthwhile to go out and find. And then finally, the Forceful Tongue Shouts works on tuning some of the shouts in the game so they feel a lot better. Staying alongside our magic mods, up next we have the Mysticism Magic Overhaul, which adds 200 more spells into the world. It also includes a sweeping balance of adjustments to vanilla spells, and even includes rare spells hand-placed around the world. With it coming in at 11.60 megabytes and adding 200 more spells into the game, this mod was pretty much impossible to pass up whenever it came to building a load order. Just make sure to also get the Mysticism Ordinator patch, which is the next mod in our list, to ensure the compatibility between Mysticism and Ordinator. Following that, we have the Improved Telekinesis mod, which is a simple, lightweight addition of adding body support to the Telekinesis spell. So you can now move a body or an object with the original Telekinesis spell, which is how I thought it should have worked in the original game of Skyrim. Just being able to use it on objects didn't really make much sense to me, I wanted to be able to move people around too which is now what you can do with the Improved Telekinesis mod. Now that we've improved our Telekinesis spells in the game, it's also important to move over to the Frost spells in the game and fix those up too with the Frost Slow Tweaks mod. Basically what this mod does is it makes it so that you can slow pretty much anyone down by using a Frost spell, and I know that it was able to be done to you by enemies, but it didn't really seem like you would cause enemies to slow down, but that's completely changed now. If you are using a frost spell, or maybe you're a battle mage and you have a frost spell in your left hand and maybe a mace or sword in your right, you can become an absolute badass by freezing your enemies in place and then walking up to them and then taking them down nice and easily. 
Next up, we can add one of my favorite spell mods into the game, which is the Placeable Statics mod, and it simply just allows you to grab and place furniture using two simple intuitive spells, and you can grab and move this furniture in statics as if they were clutter. You can fix them in place and act like they just did before you move them, and it allows you to pick up dressers, chests, different types of, you know, big furniture items that you find in either stores, caves, caverns, or, you know, just anywhere out in the world. Next up, we have the Spell Scale with Skill Level mod, which adds new numbers into the five Spell Schools Novice Perks. Once you pick a novice perk for the specific school that you want to dive into, you'll then begin to add an extra 1 to 100% magnitude on your spells for that specific school. Which means that if we take the flame spell for example that originally does 8 damage, if you have a skill level of 35 in destruction, flames will actually do 10.8 damage. After that we have another huge mod pack called Conjurer's Forge, and this is a merged mod building on the enchantments of Summer Mist and improving on the crafting and smithing in Skyrim. Now I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Summer Mist Enchantments of Skyrim mod, but what it does is it adds hundreds of new enchantments for you to use on your weapons and armor, and on top of that, also included in this mod pack, we have some crafting improvements, such as better mining, ores glow slightly, and mining is twice as fast, you can craft more items such as lockpicks and torches, as well as faction armors, you can craft and temper silver weapons, smelt down weapons, armor, and clutter into ingots, and even use iron and steel ingots to build hearth fire materials, so this pretty much has every everything you're going to need whenever it comes to enchanting and crafting in Skyrim. Moving on we have our religion mod pack which is called Common Ground, and this is a merge of mods to provide increased roleplay through religion and NPC interactions. So it includes lots of mods for religion such as Winter Sun Faiths and Shrine Blessings, and then it also changes up the dialogue as well as the movement and combat, as well as change up the interactions that you have with NPCs and make them feel like real conversations. And then after that we can move on to some of our perk point adding mods because with Ordinator installed we're going to need a lot more perk points in order to dive into those certain skill trees. Because Ordinator covers hundreds of different perks and it would be impossible without actually leveling up to, you know, level 80 to actually unlock all of the perks. So we have to add more using this mod here, the 20% more perk points mods, which just makes it so that every 5 levels you receive an additional perk point. And then after that you have the perk points at skill levels 50, 75, and 100, which of course just give you extra perk points whenever you start maximizing your skills. And then following that, the last mod in that list there, we have the Dragon Souls to Attributes, which allows you to get extra attributes such as health, match gun, stamina, or an extra perk point if you have enough Dragon Souls laying around. And then following that we have the Unread Books Glow mod, which does exactly what you may think, it just makes it so every book that you haven't read in Skyrim will glow a certain color. But this also is configurable, so you can make it so that only spell books glow, or only skill books glow, so not every single book in Skyrim will just glow if you haven't read it. You can actually customize it and make it tuned to how you want to play the game. Now it's time to add in some display and camera mods, and starting us off we have the dynamic display settings which allows you to alter the contrast, the brightness, as well as the saturation, the depth of field, the bloom radius, and the scale and threshold, and it just makes it so that you can change any interior or exterior in Skyrim to look how you want it to look. And it also saves through every interior you go in, so if I make my breeze home brighter and then I walk into a different interior, they're going to have different presets for every different interior that you have, so you can make your Skyrim look however you'd like. And then after that you have the horse camera tweak mod, which simply just makes it so that the camera, whenever you're riding a horse, looks a lot better and it's a lot more easy to follow whenever you're riding on horseback. Now we can start talking about our archery and weapon mods, and first off we have the Archery Tweaks Plus mod, which increases the speed of all arrow and bolt projectiles by 42%, and makes them fly further before dropping to the ground. You're also going to want to pick up the Archery Tweaks Ordinator patch, just so that Ordinator and Archery Tweaks work together properly. And then following that we have the Crosshair Aligned Crossbow Aim, which makes it so that whenever you aim down with a crossbow, it actually looks like the Fallout New Vegas shooting mechanic instead of the Fallout 3 one by just zooming the camera in a little bit. You'll actually be able to look down sights of your crossbow and it's a lot more satisfying than just having that little zoom mechanic. And then topping off our archery tweaks, we have the Belt Fastened Quivers mod, which makes it so that your quiver is fastened around your belt instead of your back, and it just makes it so that whenever you have the Cloaks of Skyrim enabled, it won't just clip through all of your arrows. Next up we can top off our weapon section with the Refined Artifacts and Private Eye Armory mods, and basically what the Refined Artifacts does is it makes it so that the artifacts that are the, you know, unique weapons and god tier weapons that you find in Skyrim actually feel like god tier weapons. You know, it changes the Dawnbreaker as well as the Ruth 
truthful axe, and it just makes it so that all of the artifacts that you stumble across in Skyrim now actually feel like they're god tier weapons. And then the Private Eye Armory adds so many new weapons into the game because it's a mod pack, and the Private Eye Armory contains mods such as the Heavy Armory New Weapons mod as well as the Enchanted version of it, and then you have the Royal Armory New Artifacts as well as the Plug-in Replacer, as well as Private Eye's Royal Armory Reforged. So this mod adds over 100 new weapons that will appear throughout your game equipped by enemies and available as loot in chests, and these weapons can be enchanted including the Summer Mist enchantments as well, and then finally the Royal Armory adds unique weapons weapons to the most important characters of Skyrim, meaning that Jarl Balgriff won't just run into battle with a regular steel sword, he'll have a unique sword with special enchantments. Now that we've finished up talking about the weapons that we've added to Skyrim, let's move over to the weathers and make our game look beautiful. I use a bunch of different mods here, I use the Surreal Lighting, the Eternal Sunshine, as well as the Far Better Sun for the daytime in Skyrim, and then we top it off with the Enhanced Night Skyrim mod, which just transforms the night sky into something completely beautiful. And then our actual weather mod itself is called Mythical Ages, and it's a weather overhaul that features a bunch of different changes to the weathers and adds a fantasy theme as well. There's a larger variety of weathers compared to vanilla weathers, and then my favorite feature that comes along with this mod is its preset system, which can be used to change the graphical style. You'll receive a power spell after installing the mod called Mythical Ages Presets, and you can use that to change the E and B of how your Skyrim looks. And now that we've fixed up the weather in Skyrim, now we can move over to the NPCs and make them look beautiful too, with Lean Skyrim NPC Overhaul, which I feel as though is the best Skyrim NPC overhaul that you can get for its mod space usage. It comes in at 200 megabytes and it covers pretty much every NPC that you stumble across in Skyrim, and every race as well, so it covers everything all in one mod. But this only covers the faces, so we're going to have to cover the bodies with the next mod in our list, which is the Divine Skins and Bodies for Men and Women. Basically what this mod does is it's a skin pack that was specifically created for Xbox One, and it features all kinds of new textures and special meshes for both men and women. Elves have softer faces, and orcs are more balanced, and human races are truly unique and defined. After that we can change our character into a total badass using the Beards mod which is a mod that replaces all of the vanilla Skyrim beard textures, including the Khajiit beards, with completely new high resolution and hand painted from scratch textures. This is done to provide the best photorealistic look for beards possible. And then finally, whenever it comes to creating a character, I wanted us to be able to have any type of option for any type of character that we'd possibly want. And I've noticed that the hair colors in Skyrim are very lackluster and don't include a ton of different colors, only some basic ones. So next up we have the Darts Hair Colors mod, which adds over 150 new hair colors, so that you can perfectly craft your character in the way that you want it to be made. And now that we're finished creating our character, I've always wanted to have a mod in my mod list that allows us to change the appearance of our character without having to break the game in a certain way or type in any cheat codes. And this is exactly what the Vanity Mirror does, which is an equipable inventory item, which is a handheld mirror, that'll open the limited race menu to allow you to make changes to your appearance anywhere, anytime, and without messing with your skills or perks. Now that we're done talking about our NPC mods as well as our player creation mods, now we can begin talking about our creature adding mods, such as the Argonian Hatchlings and Khajiit Caravan Kittens, which are mods that add children for those respective races, the Argonian and Khajiits, because have you ever wondered why you only see human children running around? Why aren't there any Khajiit or Argonian children? Well that's exactly what this mod does, it adds new Argonian children as well as Khajiit children, and following that we have the Hunters and Animals mod, which is a huge hunting mod pack, which includes new types of deer, a complete animal AI overhaul, as well as more opportunities to get salt piles, more meat on animals, increased healing from food, as well as 102 new cooking recipes to try out. And we can just go right along the list with the Convenient Horses mod, which is up next here, and it completely overhauls how you look at horses in Skyrim. You know, I used to never really use horses, and I never really liked to because I just like to run everywhere, but with the Convenient Horses mod, there's ways to level up your horse, you can name your horse, you can also change how it handles combat, whether you want it to charge into combat or run away to avoid damage, so there's so many things that you can customize with the Convenient Horses mod that wasn't available in the original game of Skyrim, so if you plan on using a horse throughout your character, I would strongly recommend adding the Convenient Horses mod to your list. Moving on, we have one of my favorite mod packs whenever it comes to creatures and wildlife, and this is called Sevis Ron, which is a complete texture and mesh replacer for every animal and creature in the game, including insects and fish too. 
Next up, we have the classic ghosts, Mahale Monsters and Animals, which simply just makes it so that ghosts from Oblivion are now in Skyrim too. So you'll find them in, you know, Halls of the Dead, or just in caves where there's a lot of corpses hanging around. It just makes it so that those caves are a lot more difficult, and especially the fact that we're going to be making the caves dark later, it also adds a little spooky factor in there too, so that you never know what's around the next corner in those caves. Now we can top off our creature additions with two final mods. First off, we have the Talkative Dragons mod, which reuses some vanilla voice lines to make the dragons speak during combat so they feel more like sentient creatures instead of just mere beasts. And then speaking of beasts, we have the Skyrim Bestiary up next here, which makes it so that there's 63 new craftable bestiary books covering all of the creatures in vanilla Skyrim and its DLCs. Completing each bestiary will add a 10% bonus to attack and spell damage against the creature in question. Now it's time we move on to our animation mods in our list, and starting us off we have the Dual Sun Animation Replacer, the one-handed version, as well as the Spoiler Animation Overhaul, the Cinematic Dragon Soul Absorption mod, and even the new animation for Magic Casting mod as well. The Dual Sun Animation Replacer for one-handed obviously just changes all of the one-handed animations for swords and, you know, different types of combat animations. And then the Spoiler Animation Overhaul changes a bunch of different things such as, you know, the way you run, dual wielding, the sneak animation, holding great swords and blocking. The Cinematic Dragon Soul Absorption mod makes it so whenever you kill a dragon and you start absorbing its soul, it actually has its own unique animation that plays and makes it feel a lot more badass. And then finally, the new animation for magic casting makes it so that every different spell that you cast is going to have a new unique animation for it. All in all, I feel like these four mods put together give you the best looking animations that you could possibly have in Skyrim. Now I know we already covered our magic mods, but since we added new animations for magic casting, I had to move the sustain magic mod to below this new animation for magic casting mod. Just so everything would work properly, but the sustain magic mod itself maintains your spells by sacrificing a portion of your max magicka. This means that whenever I walk into a cave, I don't have to keep casting Candlelight over and over again to see. I can cast it one time and it just sacrifices my Max Magicka to keep the spell casted. Now that we're finished with our animation mods, we can finally dive into our graphic mods and transform Skyrim into a truly beautiful game again. We can do this with the Skyland Landscapes All-in-One mod, which covers all of the landscapes that you could possibly think of, and adds new 1K, 2K, and 4K textures to snow, ice, mountains, rocks, bridges, roads, the rift, the reach, mines, caves. There's so much that this mod covers whenever it comes to landscapes, and it's just an all-in-one mod pack that covers everything very simply. And we can follow that up with one of the biggest mod packs that we have included in this mod list which is Organic Skyrim, which is an updated version of the original Organic Skyrim, and many of the textures have been changed and lots of new content has been added as well. This version better reflects the vision that they had for the project, and it now covers farmhouses, as well as orc strongholds, tents, castles, the College of Winterhold, High Hrothgar, Skyhaven Temple, blacksmithing items, the smelter and coal, candle horns with smoke effects, dining sets, hand carts, and so many more items that it would be impossible for me to cover it all in this little section here, so just know that no matter where you travel to in Skyrim, you'll be seeing new remastered textures from Organic Skyrim. Now I say everywhere you go, but I actually mean everywhere outside of towns, because Organic Skyrim and Skyland All-in-One just cover the areas outside of towns. So this is where we come in with the Cities by Clever Cherif mod, which is a mod pack, which is a merge of Clever Cherif's Whiterun, Windhelm, Solitude, Markarth, and Riften. Now it may sound like they covered most of the cities and now we have everything covered, but they did miss a few things. You know, what about Dragonbridge? What about Dawnstar, Falkreath, Aurorixted? Well, don't worry, I got us covered here with the Great City of Solitude mod up next here, which completely transforms the exterior of Solitude. You know, the interior of Solitude is covered by the Cities mod. Now we work on the exterior with the Great City of Solitude mod, which makes it truly feel like the Grand Capital of Skyrim. You know, the docks are completely expanded. There's so many new buildings and taverns and just areas to travel to. It really feels like Solitude's the biggest city in Skyrim now, which it should be. You'll also want to follow that up with the Great City of Solitude USS EP patch, which just makes it so the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch works together with the Great City of Solitude mod. Well, let's cover up those other areas as well, such as the Great City of Dragonbridge up next we have here, and then the Great City of Dawnstar, the Great City of Falkreath, the Great City of Morthal, as well as Rorikstead at the end here, just making it so that all the areas that weren't covered by the cities of Clevercharif are now covered by the Great City mods. 
but I'm still not done there yet because although all of the textures that these mods add make everything look beautiful, I still want Whiterun, which is one of my favorite cities in the game, to be at its true best. So I add four more mods on top of here to transform Whiterun even more, and these include Fortified Whiterun, the compatibility version. We run the compatibility version just so it doesn't touch the interior and we don't have any crashes. This Fortified Whiterun mod only focuses on the exterior of Whiterun. And then moving on to the interior, we have the Whiterun City Full of Life, the Better Sky Forge, as well as the Breeze Home Basement, which the Whiterun City Full of Life just makes it so there's tons of new plant life and just greenery everywhere. It makes it a beautiful city. And then for the Better Sky Forge, Forge mod, you now have everything that a forge is going to need all in one area by the Sky Forge. Meaning you now have a smelter and an armor's table, so you no longer need to trek down to Adrian's for everything. And he also has a display rack for Sky Forge weapons because you'd assume he'd want to show some of them off, right? And then a few more things on his table that would make more sense to the Sky Forge in Whiterun. And then finally, the Breeze Home Basement mod makes it so that the Breeze Home is a very viable player home, whether you're in early game or late game, because whenever you actually buy the property, you'll have a new basement that you can go down into, and it has everything that you're going to need, whether it's a smelter, an alchemy, an enchanting table, display racks and cases, you name it, everything that you're going to need in a house mod is with the Breeze Home Basement mod. Now that we're finished sprucing White Run up, now we can move over to the College of Winterhold and make that look amazing too. We can do this with the Magical College of Winterhold, which just completely overhauls the college and changes everything about it in every single interior and exterior. And then you can also grab the add-on on top of that, the Magical Staves and Stabs mod, which just makes it so that the staves and stabs in the game have a lot more functionality and they're a lot more common in the game too. Finally, our last Winterhold mod, we have the Immersive Winterhold College Students mod, which makes it so there's a ton of new NPCs that walk around the college and make it not feel so lonely. So now it seems like we've covered every different type of texture that you can find in Skyrim, now it's time to add new objects into the world and new places to explore too. Our first mod in that list, we have the ESO Sky Shards mod, which just makes it so that the Sky Shards from the Elder Scrolls Online are pretty much just ported right into Skyrim. They're scattered all throughout the world and once you collect three, you get a perk point to spend as you see fit. Following that, we have the Epic Crabs Lawbringer Plus mod, which makes it so you can take over areas that you encounter in Skyrim. Whether it's bandit camps or, you know, different types of towers and different forts that you can stumble across, a lot of these will have a flag outside that has just a default color on it, and after you clear out the entire camp, you can walk up to that flag and claim it for a specific faction of your choice. After 24 hours, the people from that faction will then move on to the area and use it as their own workstation, which I think is really cool. And speaking about taking over forts, next up we have the Imperial Stone Forts of Skyrim mod, which completely retextures every fort that you'll stumble across in Skyrim and just makes it so that they're all new and remastered. Next we can move on to adding more dungeons and caves to explore, and we can do this with the Forgotten Dungeons and Easier Riders Dungeon Pack mods. These two mods go hand in hand and they add over 20 new dungeons to explore in the game that are filled with new loot, new things to see, new traps to discover, and new enemies to fight as well. Now we can finalize these new areas in Skyrim with two final mods, those being the Farms of Skyrim, more crops, which just makes it so that every single farm that you stumble across in Skyrim actually looks like it produces a realistic amount of food to provide for their city that they're actually located outside of. And then after that you have the Place of Power mod, which completely changes the areas around the Standing Stones, like the Guardian Stone, the Ritual Stone, the Lord Stone, Lady, and Shadow Stone. These have been changed to be a lot more lore friendly and have backstories, and the areas are now much more prettier and stand out more too. Now we're still not out of our graphics section yet, you know we covered every single area that you can travel to in Skyrim and added new areas to explore as well, but now we're going to be adding items into the game and remastering those as well. We can start off with the Radiant Unique Potions and Poisons mod, which makes it so that every single potion or poison bottle is unique, not just in color but in bottle pattern, label, and adornments. Bottles have their own labels that reflect what the potion and poison does, as well as reflect some of the ingredients that go into making the specific potion as well. And then you can also follow that up with the Skyrim Remastered Soul Gems mod, which changes all of the soul gems that you can find in the game so that they all have new high quality textures. After that we have the lock picking interface redone which completely changes the way that it looks whenever you're picking a lock and it has a 100% new model and HD textures. Now the lock is a lot bigger, occupying most of the screen that otherwise would be wasted. 
And then following that, we have the beautiful gold overhaul, which retextures a majority of the golden objects in the game, such as the Crown of Baron Zaya, all of the Thieves Guild quest items, such as urns and flagons, Elder Scrolls, and coins. And speaking of coins, up next we have El Sopa's unique Coin Bags HD, which makes it so there's now three different types of coin purses that you can find, because the originals always look the same, now they're very easy to differentiate, and it just makes it so they have a new high quality texture. And staying along the same lines as these high quality textures, up next we can change all of the gemstone textures with the Gemstone Replacers HD mod. This is a merge of two mods from the Nexus that replaces all of the gemstone models with new ones, along with new textures that adds unique models for Olava's token, the Exquisite Sapphire, and the Mark of Debella. Finally, we can add the Medieval Torches for Skyrim mod, which completely changes all of the torches in the game with a medieval style custom torch with a 2K texture. And if we're going to be changing the torches in the game, we might as well change the fire effects that they give off too, right? We can do this with the Inferno Fire Effects Light mod, which changes all of the fire effects in the game, for example spells, fireplaces, campfires, braziers, torches, candles, and creatures' fire attacks. It's a complete rework of the meshes to properly add these visual effects. And since we're changing the fire in the game, we might as well change the frost as well, which we can do with the Arctic Frost redo up next here, which changes various frost effects in the game, such as spells, environmental effects, ice-type creatures, and creatures' frost attacks, and this also is a complete rework of meshes to apply these visual effects too. And we can continue talking about effects whenever we get to our next mod, which is the Dust Effects mod, and this is a simple texture replacer for the dust effects in the game, but it's needed 100% in this load order, because if you have the ELFX Hardcore mod, which we're going to be talking about in a couple minutes here, it makes every single cave dark, so if you don't have remastered dust textures, you're going to be seeing the vanilla dust textures, which is actually just pixels all over your screen, and it looks terrible. So if you're going to be having the Darkened Caves from the ELFX Hardcore mod later in the list, it is very important that you get the Dust Effects mod because the dust will actually look like dust instead of the vanilla game's pixely type dust. After that we can change our enchantment effects with the reprisal mod up next here, which adds unique visual effects to each weapon enchantment from vanilla and summer mist too. Following that we have a bundle mod called There Will Be Blood, and this is a combination of mods that adds blood effects, blood splatter, and dirt and blood on the player after battle. You can clean the dirt and blood using a power or the people will lose respect for your character, but it's not really that much so don't worry about it. The mods that are featured in this include the dirt and blood dynamic visual effects, which just makes it so whenever you're in battle or you're exploring, you get a bunch of dirt and blood that accumulate on your character that you can then wash off in water, or you can take a bath under your powers tab. And then of course this also includes the Enhanced Blood Textures SE mod, which just changes all of the textures of the blood in the game so it looks a lot more realistic. Moving on we have the Rash Shaders and Effects mod, which adds visual effects to the player and NPCs during certain weather conditions. This means if it's snowy outside, you'll start to see snow accumulate on your armor, and then if you go underwater, you'll start to see bubbles accumulate as you're swimming around. And then if you're cold, the cold breath particles will come out of your mouth whenever you're just standing idle. And then you also have camera lens flare effects with its rainy, snowy, or ashy weather going on. And this just all helps to completely immerse you in the world of Skyrim and all of the environment and weather that you get to see as well. Now it's finally time to start talking about our lighting mods. And starting us off, we have the Enhanced Light and Effects mod, which completely changes all of the lights in the game to actually emit light now. Even the windows and interiors give off light too. It also adds candle smoke effects, and then there's more add-ons that you can get, like I've been talking throughout the entire video, the ELFX Hardcore, which is the next mod in our list. This is one of my favorite mods to add to any load order, because it completely darkens every single cave that you travel to in Skyrim. Have you ever wondered how all of these caves that you travel into are always completely lit up and there's, you know, no one in the cave either, how are all these torches still lit? This mod changes it so that every single cave you go into is going to be completely dark so you'll require a torch or even a candlelight spell. And then of course after that we're going to have to get a few patches to make everything work properly. These include the ELFX SMIM patch so it works with the Static Mesh Improvement mod. You're also going to want to get the ELFX No Fake Light Under Doors so you don't see a bright glowing light from under each door that you stumble across. You're going to want to get the patch for the Magical College of Winterhold so that ELFX works properly with it. And then finally the ELFX Fixes mod which covers all of the areas of lighting that the original ELFX missed out on. So with all these mods and patches put in this order, you'll have the best looking lighting in Skyrim that you could possibly imagine. 
Now the next mod in our list I really like, it's called Animated Clutter, and it adds animations to several objects that the player is able to interact with, such as common barrels, thieves guild caches, wrapped draugr, noble chests, orc shack doors, dwemer dressers, you name it, if it's anything that you can open, or maybe something that you can loot, it's not going to have an animation of you opening that up, and it just makes it feel a lot more immersive. And speaking of immersive, up next we have the Get Immersive Cheats mod, which isn't necessarily a cheat mod, it just makes the game a lot more convenient for you. For example, it allows you to interact with more objects, meaning you get more mammoth tusks from mammoth skulls, firewood from wood piles, loot from crates, and you also get more loot or alchemy ingredients from burial urns, corpses, and barrels. Plus it adds more items that you can use in convenient places, like bedrolls you can sleep in for free in taverns and inns, as well as enchanting tables and shops. And right alongside that we have the next mod, which is the Get Immersive Merchant Cheats mod, which doubles the gold that merchants and fences have to buy your stuff, it gives you more fences that you can sell your stolen goods to, it adds magical staves and hoods to the merchandise sold by wizards, and it now allows merchants to sell rare and unique items too. And since we're still talking about merchants, I thought it would be a really good idea to put the merchant chests on display mod here for thieves, because in the original game, if you wanted to get into a vendor's inventory, you had to go outside of the map and go into a chest that was on the bottom of the map that had all of the things that they sold in it. But now this mod changes it so that the chest that they use for their inventory is actually inside the interior of their shop, and you can steal from it if you have the high enough sneak skill too. Now I know we already covered our armor mods, but up next we have the Amidian Born Civil War Armor mod, which completely changes the Imperials as well as the Stormcloak armors, and the reason why it's so far down in this list is because if we put it up top with the rest of our armor mods, then something gets overwritten and the people just use the original Imperial armor. For some reason they won't use the remastered armor, so we had to put it a lot lower in our list because it was overwritten, so just make sure you put it this low in the list instead of with the rest of your armor mods. But now we can start talking about our difficulty enhancing mods. And starting us off we have the LG difficulty and balance overhaul which drastically increases loot rarity, crafting experience have been overhauled so that there's less spamming, better perk allocations, and more. There's been a skill rate adjustment, meaning that earlier levels are harder to gain and later levels are easier, but the same experience is required overall. There's completed crafting and temping recipes, there's an overhauled alchemy and food recipe system, decreased carry weight, harder bartering, and faster paced combat. And then you're also going to want to pick up the add-ons for this mod, which is the Mist Crafting Experience for Elegy, the Restoration Potion Duration, which just patches all those glitches with the Restoration Potion, and then finally the Ordinator Patch, so that Ordinator and Elegy work together properly. But we're not going to stop there with our difficulty mods, because up next we have a difficulty bundle mod, which is the Wildcat Combat and Archery Overhaul. This mod includes the Wildcat Combat of Skyrim, of course, you could have guessed that, and then we have the Refined Movement mod, Mortal Enemies SE, as well as Realistic AI Detection. And then when it comes to archery changes, you have the Proper Aiming mod, the Simply Faster Arrows and Bolts, the Auto Equip Best Arrows, as well as the No BS AI Projectile Dodge. I myself have always used Wildcat inside of my difficulty enhancing mods, and the fact that they added that to a mod pack and added a complete archery overhaul to it just makes it 10 times better. But we're still not done there yet when it comes to difficulty because we still have to enhance some of our enemies too. We can do this with the improved bandits, complete bandit overhaul, and the goal of this mod is to make bandits and players play by the same rules while also increasing the challenge by a reasonable amount. This is done by giving bandits appropriate perks and proper equipment, and the attributes and perks of bandits have been completely rebalanced as well. The strength of bandits now increases more consistently across levels, and low level bandits will not pose an adequate challenge. Following that we have the True Dragonborn Heavy version, which makes it so by absorbing a dragon soul you gain several of the dragon's attributes including their health, magicka, and stamina. These stats will only be increased as you possess a dragon soul, so if you choose to unlock a shot with a soul you'll lose the power that came with it. And then moving on we have the Violence Kill Move mod, which gives you in-game control over both ranged and melee kill moves. There's a book that you can open up and you can change any different setting that you could possibly want whenever it comes to the chance that you get for activating these different types of kill moves or what type of kill move you do. It is all customizable within the book that you get in the Violence Kill Move mod. Now we can start talking about our beast form mods, and starting us off we have the Sion Vampire Overhaul, which is a streamlined overhaul designed to improve the gameplay of vampires and vampire lords. Because vanilla vampirism is neither deep nor engaging, and its passives and greater powers are weighted towards stage 4, meaning the quickest way to level up is to simply ignore vampirism. 
This mod completely changes it and reworks all of the perks so that you're able to level up differently so that vampires are actually a viable build early or late game. And then you can follow that up with the Lupinus mod which changes the werewolves in the game so that there's naturally occurring werewolves in the game as well as werewolf AI. You also have increased werewolf speed and a disease that you can get without being in the companions first. You can actually ignore the companions completely and just find these natural occurring werewolves and get the disease for yourself. And it also changes the combat whenever it comes to these werewolves as well. And now we can top off our beast form mods with the werewolf loot mod, which does exactly what you may think. It just makes it so that you can loot while you're in werewolf form. The next section we're going to be covering is going to be the guilds of Skyrim. And we can start off by talking about the thieves guild with the sneak tools mod here. And this sneak tools mod adds tons of new gameplay features and mechanics to sneaking. You can now sneak up behind enemies and cut their throat, you can extinguish and reignite flames with water and fire arrows, or even distract and make a trap for enemies with oil and noisemaker arrows, and you can even knock out enemies instead of killing them for pacifist playthroughs. And then next up we have a bundle mod, which is the Sneak Thief and Opulent Collection, which is a merge of 32 mods to enhance your Sneak Thief Assassin playthrough. I won't be able to name every single mod inside of this list, but some of them I'll go over. We have the Opulent Thieves Guild, of course, the Less Tedious Thieves Guild, the Throwing Weapons Light, the Serpent Dagger, the Dagger Craft Package, the Sneak Arsenal, the Dwemer Exploding Traps and Bombs, the Rings of Light, the Sneaky Stealth Box, Quiet Muffle and Visibility will last two minutes even after activating objects, Stealth Magic, the Cure Poison spell, you get it, there's tons of different types of sneaking mods, 32 to be exact, all jam packed into this one opulent collection here. But just to make sure everything works together properly, you're also going to want to get the Opulent Thieves Guild plus ELFX patch, which just makes it so the Opulent Thieves Guild that we just downloaded works properly with the Enhanced Light and Effects mod. Moving on to the next mod in our list, we have the Choose Guild Jobs with Bets, which allows you to choose where you want to do a Thieves Guild quest from Delvin or Vex. This means you can choose to go to Solitude, Markarth, Riften, etc., and you can also bet to do it in a certain time amount so that you get three times the pay if you return back in that time limit. Next up, we have a mod that I'm a huge fan of, and it's called a Thief's Resolve which is basically like a Where's Waldo mod, Waldo being the stash of loot, and each location being a crowd of people to search through. What this mod does is it adds one well-hidden loot stash to every single dungeon interior in Skyrim. There's 355 loot stashes in total, containing 500 gold plus a healthy assortment of random enchanted and unenchanted jewelry, daggers, items, a small quiver of arrows, and even a few potions. So every single cave that you go into in Skyrim will have a very small cache that you can loot if you're able to find it. We can wrap up talking about guilds in Skyrim with the final mod in our list, which is called the Real Dark Brotherhood, which is a mod pack that includes so many different quality of life improvements for the Dark Brotherhood just to make it feel a lot more immersive and realistic. Moving on, we have the Craft Everything mod, which makes it so that every single non-unique piece of clothing, armor, and weapon is craftable now. And the focus of this mod was for roleplay and utility, which means if you can't find a pickaxe, you can simply make one with a fairly low materials requirement. We can expand our crafting even further with our next mod, which is called the Mystic Condenser Updated version, which allows you to combine a bunch of the same potion together to make the next tier of the potion. So if you have a whole bunch of lower level potions, you can then combine all of those potions together to make a higher tier potion, which is very good late game whenever you have a bunch of different lesser healing potions. You can then craft them into the big healing potions to actually heal you the full amount. Now we can completely change how the grass looks in Skyrim up next here with Kind's Grass the Medium Settings version. Now this is a mashup of multiple grasses distributed throughout Skyrim, and this includes the verdant grass, the unique grasses and ground covers, grass field, the Skyrim flora overhaul, unbelievable grass 2, Tamriel reloaded grasses, plants, and shrubs. And there's so many different foliage and plant overhauls included here, making it one of the best grass mod packs that I think I've ever seen in Skyrim. Now that we've remastered the grass in Skyrim, we can now move over and change up the water with the Cathedral Water Updated mod. This is a comprehensive visual overhaul for Skyrim that makes rivers appear much more realistic, in part because the shores and riverbanks now have calmer and more transparent water, as opposed to high specular and large obvious waves previously passing through them at unnatural angles. Moving on, we can grab the Color Patches Remover up next here, which is a mod that just removes those weird orange squares that you sometimes stumble across in Skyrim. This just completely gets rid of them so you won't see them anymore. 
Next up, we have a mod that I pretty much can't play Skyrim without, and that's the Alternate Start Live Another Life mod. This provides an alternate means to the start of the game for those who don't want to go through the lengthy intro sequence at Helgen, and you'll be given the opportunity to choose your race and then choose a new life for your character to lead. You have a wide variety of choices available, and what you choose will have a lasting impact, so choose carefully or the gods will forsake you again. But when it comes to these choices that you can make whenever you start your character, we can expand your choices even more with the next mod in our list, which is the add-on called New Beginnings Alternate Start. This adds 14 new starts in addition to the starts from the original alternate start, and these include an addict in a skooma den, an adventure in a dwemer ruin, you arrived at Angie's camp, you were attacked by a dragon, you've been thrown in jail. These are just a few examples, but you can pretty much start the game however you'd like to now. Next up, we're going to be talking about the quest mods that we're adding to this load order, and starting us off, we have the Headhunter Bounties Redone mod, which makes it so you'll need to get proof that you completed bounties. Whenever you kill the target of a bounty, whether it be a bandit, giant, or dragon, you'll receive an item in their inventory, and whenever you loot them, getting this item will fade the screen out for black for a second, and then the target will lose their head. Literally. And then you just bring the head as proof to the bounty. This mod also includes new non-violent ways to finish these bounties by imprisoning bandit leaders and bringing them over to a guard for justice. After that we have the Missives mod which adds missive boards to the Nine Hold Capitals. There you can find a number of different radiant quests of varying difficulty, and these include courier quests, gather quests, kill quests, retrieve quests, hunting quests, and with all of these variants and different holds taken together, this mod contains a grand total of 264 radiant quests. You'll also want to pick up the patch for Headhunter and Missives and put it below this one just so the two run together properly. Following that, we have the Parthenax Dilemma, which just gives you more options whenever it comes to how you handle the main quest, and it gives you a lot more dialogue options as well, so it's just a mod that I always throw in, just so it makes the main quest a lot better. Topping off our quest section, we have the Radiant Quest Marker SE mod, which just makes it so whenever you do a Radiant Quest, you'll be told that it's a Radiant Quest. So whenever you start it, it'll be in parentheses that it's a Radiant Quest so you don't waste your time. The next mod we're going to pick up is called Sleep to Level Up, and it does exactly what you may think, it just makes it so you have to sleep in order to level up, because I miss how that was in Oblivion, how you couldn't just spam a level up in combat to get all your stats back, you actually had to go back to your house, you know, take a load off, store all of your stuff, and then actually level up by sleeping in your home bed. I liked that idea from Oblivion, so we're just going to port it over to Skyrim and make it so you have to sleep to level up in Skyrim now. After that we have the Run For Your Lives mod, which is a small mod that makes citizens in a villager's city run indoors during a dragon or vampire attack. It's very useful so that the entire city of Riften doesn't die if one dragon swoops down. Following that we have the Better Intimidation mod, which changes all of the dialogue options for intimidation so that the lines are a lot less edgy now, and the dialogue contains far less vulgarity, instead relying on actual threats. We can change even more about the conversations that we're having with the Realistic Conversations mod up next here, which makes it so that NPCs won't always just run their mouth to everyone that they stumble across, they'll actually plan out the way that they talk and they won't pause in between each sentence either, now they actually talk like people should now. And after that we can go even farther with the Relationship Dialogue Overhaul up next, which adds over 5,000 lines of completely voiced dialogue for NPCs for more than 50 voice types. It focuses mainly on friends, followers, spouses, and rivals, and all this dialogue is voiced using the original voice files from the game. However, you're going to want to pick up the RDO USS EP patch after that, which is just going to make it so the Relationship Dialogue Overhaul and the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch work together properly. Next up we're going to download the Underwhelming Multiple Followers mod, which is going to increase our max follower count to 3 instead of 1. And with these difficulty balancing overhauls that we had previously, it's going to be important to travel in numbers if you start having some issues. You're also going to want to follow this mod up with the UMF USS EP compatibility patch, as well as the RDO compatibility patch after that, which just makes it so the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, as well as the Relationship Dialogue Overhaul, work together with the Underwhelming Multiple Followers mod. Next up we have the Immersive Speechcraft mod, which adds several dialogue options to most of Skyrim's NPCs, and these include being able to have NPCs follow you, you can now barter with anyone in the game, you can command any NPC in the game, as well as gift them, beg for money for them, trick them, fight them, you can now comment on the weather, or even mug them too. 
This completely overhauls the speechcraft system in the game and makes it so you can talk to any NPC, no matter if they have dialogue for you or not. And moving on to the final mod in this huge load order, we have the FPS Eternal mod, which boosts your frames per second and gives you the best performance that you could possibly have in Skyrim. There is one more thing that we have to do, however, and that's after we completely install all of these mods from this list, you'll wanna back out and then close Skyrim and then completely power off your console. After you power the console back up, you can relaunch Skyrim and create a new character and have a brand new Skyrim to explore. And that is it! That is all 150 mods in this huge mod pack mod list, and I'm extremely confident in my placing and testing of these mods, so that you won't have any issues whatsoever. But that being said, Skyrim is Skyrim, so if you end up having any issues with this load order or have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comment section below and I'll be sure to help you guys out the best that I can. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to add to this list, or maybe mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 mod episodes, then be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter, I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it, hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later.